in our mind and the things that we are searching for they're sure we'll never find but what I've got within my heart I know is real for when he saved me he gave me in our mind and the things that we are searching for they're sure
appreciate your prayers for her um, amen I'd rather be here than anywhere I know how many love you church well I, I love a church you can feel the presence of God in amen. praise the Lord I'm telling you what I, I I wouldn't go to a dead church I made comment and preach in many many years I'd drive a hundred miles amen if I had to uh, to go to something that I could feel the presence of the Lord in my my listen you know I'll never forget something my pastor said many many years ago he said, the Lord will let you sit on the pew and die. Now, that stuck with me for many years. The Lord will let you sit on a pew and die. Amen. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. I love, uh, I love the presence of the Lord. Something as big as God gets in you, it'll come out somehow or another. Uh, well, I'm not, used to all this, uh, I'm not used to all this emotionalism, preacher. No, I used to all that kind of stuff. I tell you what, got people all through. I mean, I've had it get back to me. Come all through the years, Amen. And how folks worship and how, and they'll sit there and they'll quench the spirit, Amen. I've often wondered what people are gonna really do when they get to heaven. Really, what are they gonna do? Amen. When they see Jesus for the first time, what are they gonna do? You ever thought about what you're gonna do? I mean, we'll never, we none know what we're really going to do till we get there. Right. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't think I'm just, we're going to be in reverence to the king. But glory to God, if I shouted here just to think about it every once in a while and get, get happy every once in a while, 
I'm going to be a worshiping and praising God. And worship is a little bit emotional. Praising is emotional. Hallelujah. I've been to church with people all my life, didn't see much out of them. No, I ain't telling you have to act like I act. You have to do like I do. But somehow, there'll be some kind of emotion. Go to the next ball game that you go to and whatever team you're backing and sit there and don't do nothing while you watch that game. How many can do that? Oh, come on. Now you're going to have to repent in the house of the Lord. That's ex- why would you go if you would? <laughs> I, I knew that was the answer, Stephen. I knew that was the answer. So I'm, I'm saying, hey, uh, I, I get excited and I go to a ball game. I was at, I was, I was at a Titan game one time. Was we married or was we dating? We were dating. Man, he just dating. That's when that Copenhagen, I bought a roll of it a week. And I had a big old dip of Copenhagen in my mouth. And I had Miss Spit Cup. Always put you something in that spit cup to catch that spit. <laughs> Son, McDowell done something or the other team done something. And I jumped up and I went, woo! Well, I held the cup, but the spit went straight up. And I <laughs> come right back down on top of my head. And I'm thankful. That it did. <laughs> or, or the people in front of me, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have been here. <laughs> but my point is, there's times you're going to get, they got a, there's some kind of feeling comes along with it. Amen. Amen. But it may, your, your emotion may not be my same emotion, but I thank God I feel him. Not saved by feeling, but something big as God comes in, you you know his iron, and it'll come out somehow uh, through a tear or a raise of a hand. Uh, amen. And by the way, God's house ought to be uh, a place of reverence. Now, sometimes I think we let that get a little bit out of hand. Not reverencing like we should. Everybody with the preacher? But I don't believe in quenching the spirit. Well, God's good. I heard you a little sermonette. Amen. Amen. This morning, hallelujah. And thank you for being in the Lord's house. All right. I tell you what, appreciate all those that came yesterday for the prayer, 9 o'clock. All those that showed up uh, for the visitation and bus meeting. What a blessing. Three uh, said they rededicated the heart and lives to the Lord yesterday. Um, pray for them. Uh, that God will just uh, uh, continue. Uh, listen, whether they come to this church or not, pray to God. They'll get in a good God-fearing, Bible-believing church and pray that God will remove all the obstacles, amen, that the devil has probably ever tried to put in their way uh, to get to the house of the Lord. The devil hates the Christian, and the devil hates the sinner to the fact that he don't want the sinner to never to think about the house of God, think about righteous things, holy things. And that's the reason it's such a battle to get here sometime. Anybody have anybody ever have trouble getting to the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Read, why, read why that in. You know why. The enemy don't want you here. Right. Amen. And then you got folks like Brother Norman that's home and sick and unable to be here, and his heart's here. Right. Right. And it'd be everything in his will and power to get here. Amen. Amen. I ain't never, I ain't never figured out. Uh, been in this thing many, many years. I don't know why I'm rambling on. Now, I'm not rambling on. I'm giving you what God's laying on my heart. Never figured out why God saved me and gave me a desire to be in God's house amongst God's people. And then some say they're saved, and God didn't give them that same desire. There's something wrong somewhere, and I don't think some people got what I got. All God's people said, Amen. praise the Lord. All right. Let's stand our feet this morning, if you will. Let's have the usher to come around. We're going to take up our uh, morning tithes and offering. Uh, again, we want to also remind uh, everyone, keep coming to the visitation and the bus meeting and the prayer service. God's honoring our prayer. Remember revival. 
uh, starts on uh, August, excuse me, on uh, March the, excuse me, February the 25th. I'll get it out in a minute. That's on Thursday night through Sunday morning. Now, some people are saying, I know some people are concerned. Well, what if we got a lot of visitors? What about a lot of people? We're going to do it as responsibly as we can. Uh, I've had someone say that they'll probably wear their mask. Well, I'd suggest you do. Amen. If it, it, now, I ain't making it mandatory. Now, somebody say amen there. Amen. amen. Not making it mandatory, but if you feel more comfortable wearing it, uh, if we're around more people, that's, hey, wear it. That's the reason I wear one between, I, I don't want to take nothing to my mom, and that's the reason I set her up here. So if you come by her, just don't spit on her. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but we're in God's house, aren't we? Praise the Lord, and we're going to still do the same protocol and try to uh, be as, as responsible. I'm looking forward to revival. Pray for these men men of God that's going to be a preaching, the singers that's going to be a singing. Uh, I meant to make a list uh, to help me. I'll try to do that tonight um, uh, uh, for uh, Brother Mike Blanton, um, the evangelist, and his wife, and then uh, uh, Shane and Levi. Uh, it's one of the other singers and the piano player. I'm wanting to do a uh, gift. I want to do a gift basket. I'm going to buy the baskets. I'm going to make a list of what I want in each basket. Uh, I want to make it personalized to them, meaning, <laughs> meaning Brother Mike, he's, uh, he's pastored for many years. He's a preacher, evangelist. Uh, I, and then, of course, the pastor's wife. And then Brother Shane has sung for many, many years. Brother Shane... Uh, some of you may remember it, may not. Used to sing with the Joy Ayers many years ago. Uh, and then Brother Levi, he sings and plays the piano. Uh, so I'd like to have these baskets personalized, uh, meaning uh, I want to get things in each basket uh, that will help them, okay, that will be a blessing to them the couple of nights that they're with us uh, in their motel room. Um, I, know, uh, I know Brother Jeff Silver invited some pastors uh and we went we went to that a few weeks a few saturdays ago and uh some of their church personalized uh, i meant to bring it personalized uh water bottles just personalized them and uh and was given out but anyway just little old things maybe you might want to give a devotional book i'm gonna write down some things and ask you to bring them if you'd like to get signed up for um maybe a coffee mug to go in it uh, just some little gift and then snacks and things of that nature um, make sure they're KJV that's all we ask there make sure there's nothing uh, but KJV right. all God's people say him all right let's bow our heads Heavenly Father we ask you to bless the offering Lord we ask you to bless the gift and the giver and we'll pray that you to bless uh, God the singing Lord Bless the preaching, whatever's done today, you'd be exalted, you'd be lifted up, magnified, and God, you be you get the glory in Christ's name. What was you gonna say? Monday the twenty second, we'll be having church cleanup. And when I say the church cleanup, that means uh, both buildings. Amen. There's a lot of tension needs to be done out there, uh, and a lot of tension here. Uh, so if you, I need help, I'll be on Monday the twenty. Second, Monday the 22nd. But we need more help we get is the quicker we'll get it done, okay? All right. After all, if we play past you, let's wave at each other. Right?
Anybody got a song on their heart? Want to sing as a choir? Anybody? All right, what number is that? You don't know. What number is that in the hymn book? 350. 350. Amen. If we done it, it's worth it again. Hallelujah. There's a land. Sing a song this morning.
said he's always there. Amen. Amen. He said he'd never leave thee nor forsake Amen. thee. I thank God for that promise, don't you? Sometimes the way is long and hard And sometimes I don't feel like traveling on Sometimes I'm pierced by Satan's darts and sometimes I just want to go home. But always he is with me. Always he still Still a blinking. <laughs> Hebrews chapter number 12. Appreciate all those that watch my live stream. I had uh, folks from Dalton, Georgia. Say that they were uh, excited about our services for the revival and looking forward to that. Amen. So you got folks that are watching, so don't take that uh, for granted. And everyone that uh, watches, we do thank you for that. 
And I want to say for the, all those that, that take care of the, the sound, all the media stuff, it's more a job than you think it is. Uh, and they, and again, uh, sometimes things that we take for granted, and I don't want to take all those folks for granted. Uh, that's down to putting up the sign. Revival coming soon. How, how many like that sign? Amen. Praise the Lord. She said, you see the sign, preacher? I said, yeah. She said, uh, next week we'll put, we'll put it on there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Revival coming soon. Praise the Lord. Uh, but anyway, I always appreciate Brother Norman and Sister Margaret uh, for that sign ministry. They, they think that might be small. That ain't a small thing. Amen. Amen. Uh, vacuuming the floor ain't a small thing. Uh, picking up a piece of paper that you see laying there. You, you know what you ought to do? You ought to pick that piece of paper up if you see it. And uh, especially, amen, uh, the pews we're sitting in, um, don't leave them a mess. Oh, well, I don't guess I'm going to preach on that, I guess. But hallelujah. This is God's house. It ought to be the best. It, it ought to be better than your house. Hallelujah. And you say, well, I live in a fine house. It still ought to be better than your house. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us this morning. Lord, you know what we need. Lord, take this old lips of clay, uh, dear Lord, and anoint them. God, and give us, Lord, wisdom and knowledge of your word. I ask you, Lord, today the few thoughts, God, that you've laid upon our heart, the scripture, uh, God, that you'd just guide us. God, we'd be sensitive to your spirit. God, you'd feed your people today. And all God's people said, I need your prayers. I've struggled, struggled all morning. I've just really, I've got some things down. Uh, but I've got this verse on my mind and couldn't get it, get it off of my mind. Uh, chapter 12 of Hebrews, verse number 1. We're going to read a few verses, but I want to I really take the text. Well, let's just preach. Amen. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Ye may be seated. May the good Lord add his blessings to the reading of the scripture. Amen. I'm thankful that, hey, I'm thankful that Jesus is the author and the finisher. Amen of my faith. Amen. I'm glad he's Alpha and Omega. Amen. The beginning and the end. I'm glad and thankful he's God. He's the only God. Amen. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I'm thankful he also says that there's no man can come unto God, amen, unless he comes through Jesus, amen. Uh, this morning, amen, the Bible says here in verse number one, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, amen. Uh, really to get the understanding of this scripture, I, this scripture came to my mind uh, coming home last night from uh, I, or the other night, whenever it was, uh, from eating supper and uh, uh, Amen. And I couldn't couldn't get it off my mind. It kept just I preached on it before, Amen. And I I'm still not going to preach what I thought I was going to preach out of this verse of scripture. I may give you a few things, but I'm not going in the direction, Amen. That I thought I actually was going to go in, Amen. Listen, I. Uh, I want to say this, to thoroughly understand any verse in the Bible, you got to examine the meaning of, of words, amen. Uh, I mean, it's just like when you study the birth of Christ, amen. If you're not careful, uh, we'll, get a wrong, we'll get a different picture, amen, of the birth of Christ, amen, and its surroundings of what it really was in the culture of that time. How many know what I'm talking about? And I don't think those thoughts that we have is wrong. 
Amen. Because uh, just like for the instance, the word stable. Amen. We know a stable, amen, is something normally in a barn. Amen. But if you'll go and, re and read the Hebrew and read the Greek of the word stable, amen, uh, a stable could even have been in a house at that time. According to a lot of study. Now, what do you mean by that? Because they kept a lot of the animals inside where they lived. Okay, so uh, I hope you're getting the picture of what I'm trying to say. And uh, words means a lot. It seems to, uh, when you study certain words, it seems to shed more light uh, onto the scripture. And it helps us to see exactly what God's word is saying and speaking to us. According to the scriptures, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Did you know that? I mean, listen, the Bible says that this tongue is set on fire of hell, amen. Uh, in other words, this thing is, is as a fire, amen. And man, it's got to be, it, the Bible says no man can tame the tongue. But also, amen, thank God, listen, there's death and life that are in the power of the tongue. It's only who we yield our tongue to. Amen, that makes, amen, that different, amen. And, uh, and, and the words that we carry, amen, uh, with them is the power of life and death. So uh, therefore we should always speak life and we also should uh, speak uh, positive things. Somebody said, well, preacher, you're not too much of a positive preacher. You preach on hell. That's one of the most positive things you can preach. Amen is on hell, amen, and, and the wages of sin, amen, is death, amen. Uh, so it also means that God's word, uh, words carry, amen, uh, the power of eternal life and eternal death. So it's, it's, it's crucial. I want us to look in, in verse number one one more time. It says, wherefore seeing uh, we are also compassed about. Compassed about means that, uh, amen, that we're encircled about, that we're enclosed about. In other words, uh, um, there's a lot of things that are around us. Listen, folks, we, 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 live in a, we live in a day, there's a lot going on around us, amen? And he said we're compassed about, and I'm not going to stay long here, with so great a cloud of witnesses. We got people that are looking on. In other words, they're large crowds. Amen, so great, amen, means so great. That means they're large, amen, there's uh, so many, amen, witnesses, amen. Listen, we got a lot of folks looking looking at your life, looking at your walk, amen, looking the way you live. I've often wondered sometimes why our families are not saved. Are, are we living the life in front of our families, amen, that we need to live? I mean, what kind of words come out of our mouth? What what kind of things that we listen to, amen? I'm not gonna get on those things, I don't, I don't think, but can asked about was so great. In other words, what we say means something to our surroundings. Uh, I mean, what, what comes out of our mouth means things to our family. I mean, uh, I don't want nothing to come out of my mouth that it will shock my wife. I don't want nothing, amen, that would come out of my mouth that would shock. Now, she lives with me. She knows me. Amen, I don't want nothing to come out of my mouth that my family, amen, it would shock them to know that I had said, I mean, I've been around a lot of people that they said things and it shocked me. I thought, man, uh, what did they say? Uh, or what was that word that they used? Amen, it's just like the name Jesus Christ. Amen, I think that word Jesus Christ ought to be used in a holy way. It ought to be used in a reverence way, amen. It's important, amen. Words are important. We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I mean, uh, listen, I'll be honest. When I hear the name Jesus Christ used, amen, in just a byword, it makes, it makes me uncomfortable. And you know who you hear say it more than, uh, than you think? So-called Christian people. Well, I got, I got news for you. I may not even go the way I thought I was going. You better, we better make sure, amen, that our yay is yay and our nay is nay. That's what the Bible says our speech ought to be. Why? Because, amen, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, I know you can take different, uh, amen, uh, different views on that, but he said, let us lay aside. What does that mean? Let us lay aside. In other words, to put away. It means uh, literally to put away, amen, or even figuratively. It means to cast off. It means to put apart, to, amen, lay aside, lay down, put off. It says lay aside every weight, 
amen, and the sin. I've often wondered why he separated that. Every weight, amen, and the sin. In other words, that, that leaves me with the suggestion, amen, that uh, every, every, everything ain't a sin. In other words, there's weights, amen, that's not sin that we need to take, we need to lay aside. Amen. Now, I've not got all that studied out and I've got a few things and y'all may not go exactly the way you think I ought to go this morning, amen, but you pray for the preacher, amen, but uh, it's just, and he's referring to like a runner in a race, amen, amen, because he goes on down there to say that, lest I'd every weight and the sin. So everything, in other words, there's some weights that we have on us. It might not necessarily be a sin, but we need to make sure that we're not hindered by those weights. Amen. Who, who didn't come this morning because, now listen, of a weight, amen, or maybe, um, or hey, but now I'll be honest with you, amen, most of the weights that, amen, that I thought about, amen, most of the weights, Brother Keith, that came to my mind, and they was just a few, amen, uh, they was a result of the sin. I, oh, amen, amen. So, so really was the writer, amen, saying here uh, the way and the sin. In other words, he was trying to put both of them together, that that sin is a weight. There's a lot of sins that are weights. Amen, amen. And listen, you, you can't run in a, in a race. I mean, I'm about, how many pounds am I down? I don't know. Did you count them? One. All right, my wife says I'm down 62 pounds from what I did weigh. That's more than one, brother. You're 61 off, amen. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, listen, that's 61 pounds, and I, I was laying in bed last night, and I was, uh, you know, you're tired, and I didn't have all my thoughts collected, and I thought, man, if I had some dumbbells up here. Well, Lord. I started to say I do, amen, but I'm just playing with you, amen. 61 pounds, 62 pounds is a lot of weight. Some of you just got that, amen. <laughs> Sometimes I'll stick my foot in my mouth. Somebody say amen. Somebody get offended by that. You're going to admit it if you got offended by it. I'm just playing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Jack, you know I love you. He don't know now. <laughs> Jack, I'm just teasing. <laughs> 61 pounds is a, 62 pounds is a lot of weight. I think I brought a sack of five pound potatoes, I think, one time in church and, and carried them. Five pound of potato on your shoulders or a 10 pound bag of potatoes on your shoulders, it takes more out of you than you think. Amen. If I had 60 pounds up here this morning and had you to come and, and, and lift 60 pounds, amen, it would, it would shock me how much just that, and I was a carrying around on my body. Weights do hinder you. Amen. Uh, things in our life, amen, that are considered weights. Now let's, let's go ahead and I'll try to get into maybe some of that later, how God leads me. Amen. He said to lay aside. It means to put away. There's things in our life that we have to let down. If we're going to run this race, there's things in this life that we have to make sure that's not hindering us. Those weights, amen, that weigh us down, that keeps us from the presence and the, and the power of God. Amen. Weights means a mass. It means that that has bending or bulging by its load. I tell you, 60 pounds will make you squat. Amen. I'm talking about, hey, that's a lot of weight. You can't do as much with 60 pounds, more pound on you than you could with 60 less pound on you. All God people say it. It's a hindrance. It's a burden. In other words, it's a, it's a heaviness. I, how many remember the sheep? I can't remember what he was called. Amen. That had all the wool. Amen. They found him up in a cave. I preached on it many years ago. Amen. And had all the wool. Amen. It hadn't been shaved. And, uh, uh, man, I can't remember, but I used that as an example one time. But listen to what he says here. So great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. In other words, hey man, that, that, in other words, that thing that attacks us, that thing that sets us back, that thing that, that hinders us from being the Christian, uh, to being the, the pastor, to being the, uh, the soul winner, to being what we need to be, a husband, a wife, hey man, all of these things um, that 
that we need to lay off because they beset us. They, they put us in a place that we're hindered to do those things. A lot of people's got good intentions. Amen. A lot of you have good intentions of getting your Bible read through this year. Amen, and my intentions is to do that. And I, but listen, we, we, it takes sacrifice, amen. But he says not only stop there, but he says there, amen, to let, uh, that so easy to set us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In other words, we're in a race. That's what this Christian walk is, amen. It means uh, uh, it's a fight, it's a, it's a contest, amen. It's a con- there's contention, amen, uh, that's set before us. In other words, it's laid out there. We know the path that we need to take, amen. And we know, glory to God, we know the path we need to take. And we need to make sure, amen, that we're taking and, and, and viewing that path, amen. Listen, we're surrounded and we're encouraged by lives and, and testimonies, there's of those witnesses, and we should do as they did, amen, when they ran the race. we got to lay aside. Listen, as Christians, we got to learn to put away and cast off all those burdens. Anybody in here this morning has a burden? I, I want you to just, let's role play this morning, amen. How many's got a burden? Help me here. How many's got a burden on you this morning? You know is a burden. You know what that burden is? Is a weight. Now some of you, amen's got a burden. Now for you that don't have a burden, you need to pray for those that raise their hand. Amen, listen, because you know why, amen, we're to help each other carry our loads, hallelujah. We're to help bear one another's burdens, amen. There's, there's weights and burdens on us this morning. I don't know who I'm preaching to, amen, there's somebody here, I don't know, hey, you, your mind hey, seems like that hey, you've got a weight and you've got a burden and maybe you, didn't, maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you've got one. You didn't want nobody to know you had that burden. Well, I'm gonna say this this morning, if, you, if you've got a burden, there ain't nothing, amen, that God can't tell take, amen, that God, amen, can't help you with, and that burden, you may seem like that it's the end of the road, I thank God he answered a prayer for me this way, and I'll be honest, it's had me burdened, and you said, now preach, preacher, you're preaching on weights, amen, listen, the preacher's, amen, to say, hey, he's the same as you are, I'm human like you are, amen, I ain't perfect, amen, I just thank God I'm forgiven, but I had a burden, amen, this week, and I, amen, well, not just this week, for several weeks, and I, there's been days I've thought, man, I ain't Hey, Lord, you're going to have to help me. you have to lighten the, hey, you, you're going to have to get my mind off of it. Amen. How many have been there? I mean, I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to go, I didn't want to get out and do nothing. I didn't, why? Because there was a weight on me. You said, preacher, what had you uh, so burdened down? That's between me and God. Hallelujah. But thank God I had that burden this week lifted off of me. And you know what? I'd, I'd ask certain people to pray about a certain thing. And then, and then, and God showed me a couple of Sundays ago. He said, I'm going to take care of it. Now, when he spoke to me and he gave me peace at that moment, he was going to take care of that burden. And God was going to take care of it. Well, it helped me there for <laughs> half a day, five or six hours. And then how many's been there? And then all of a sudden, amen, that, that thought comes back, amen, it's there. And you know what? It just weighed heavy. But many times in the last two or three weeks, amen, God would say, remember what I told you. I'd go down, I'd, I, matter of fact, I'd, I think I talked to Jimmy one day and I asked him about it and I said, no, I shouldn't ask you that because God done told me he's going to take care of it, amen. You know, how, you know, hey, I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how close to God you're living. You're still going to have weight. You're going to have burdens. Amen. But when God speaks to you, you claim that thing. Amen. You claim it. But why, why are we like that? Amen. That, I, that's a weight that hindered me. Amen. From doing how you say, what could you have done different? I don't know. But hey, I, I know this. I probably caused myself an ulcer. I mean, I don't know that I got them, but I'm going to say this. It, it sure is every time I thought about it, the devil, you know what the devil do? You're in trouble. <laughs> devil say, oh, you're in trouble. I mean, well, he, he'd say, what are you going to do? <laughs> now, when I say in trouble, amen, I don't mean, le- somebody say amen. <laughs> amen, when I say you're in trouble, amen, the devil put all kind of thoughts in your mind. I mean, I, he, he'll put the thoughts in your mind. Hey, man, did you, hey, hey, hey you, 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 know how, you know how the devil talks to you? 
Hey man, you say, well, I'd like to know what it is. Oh, it ain't none of your business. All I know is God told me to take care of it. And guess what he done? This week he took care of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's like a thousand pounds lifted up off of me. I'm telling you this morning, whatever your burden is, I'm glad I got a God, amen, that'll bear our burdens. Amen. Hey man, his burden is light. Amen. Hallelujah. Casting all your care upon him. You know why? Because he cares for you. Amen. He cares for you. There ain't nothing that, hey, I'm telling you, I'm trying to get you to lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily, amen, beset you, amen. I mean, as Christians, we gotta learn what to cast those things off, amen, those hindrances, those offenses, amen. A beset means standing around, amen. In other words, those weights and sins that besets us. You know what a beset means? It means it keeps us off the race. Hey, beset means it gives a suggestion of standing, you ain't, hey, if you ain't a running, you're standing or you're sitting. Hey, man, he said, hey, man, stay in that, stay on the course. Lay away those weights, hey, man. Lay away, lay aside those uh, sins that death so easily beset you. And maybe, well, maybe I'll get into it in a minute. God wants us to know that the race, hey, man, is not the swift nor the battle, hey, man, uh, to, to the strong, but to him that endures, hey, man, to the, how many believe it's an endurance you got thing? Endure until the end. The race, amen, is going to have hills. Amen, the race is going to have turns. They're going to have valleys, amen. How many has been through a valley lately? Amen, listen, they're going to have obstacles, amen. Hey, but you know what? We need to stay in the race, amen. Keep on running. Hey, glory to God, I'm running to win. I'm running to win. Listen, if you hey, if heaven's your goal, keep running, amen, until you hear the master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, you listen to this preacher, the weights, amen, that slow us down, amen, in this, in this uh, race, amen. Sometimes, well, really, the weights are just an outright sin. Amen, if it's a weight, I know he separated the weight and the sin, Hey man, if it's a weight, hey amen, I told you a while ago, I started thinking about, well, what would these weights be that's not a sin? When I started thinking about some of these things that are weights, hey amen, that's not necessarily a sin, hey amen, most of the time those weights come as a result of a sin. Those certain weights become as a result, hey amen, of that sin. Well, hey, the Bible says if you know, do, know to do good and do it not, it's a sin. How many is with the preacher? So I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but sometimes it's just outright sin. Hey, man, hey, listen, things that we know that are wrong, hey, man, but listen, we've simply been unwilling to let go of them. We know it's wrong. We know we shouldn't. We know we should read our Bible more. We know we should pray more. We know we should be back at the house of God tonight. We know we should be back Wednesday night. We know with all of our heart, amen, we should be there on Saturday morning. <laughs> oh, I, ain't, oh, I ain't getting into it. Amen, listen to me. Hey, I'm talking about those, those things, amen, that, hey, I, that we just won't let go of. How many remember you telling you about the monkey? Hey, man, the, 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 little, the little monkey, amen, how they catch those monkeys. How many, anybody ever wanted a monkey? I've always wanted, I ain't so, always. But I always thought I wanted one of these little bitty monkeys that they play for the music and they go out there and get you. How many's ever wanted one? Look at that. Look at that. Stacy, hi. Anybody else? Look at that. Now, I don't know. That thing might tire me up if I had one. But anyway, you, you know how they caught them monkeys? You know how they say they catch them monkeys? They'd tie, they'd tie a gourd to a tree. They'd put a hole in that gourd, and that hole in that gourd, and they'd take put peanuts in that gourd and they would put, cut a hole and when that monkey would come to that tree it'd stick its hand it'd rattle that thing I mean it'd hear, it'd hear those peanuts it'd probably sniff in the hole probably look in the hole and then all of a sudden it'd stick its hand in the hole and grab a handful of those peanuts and that's how they'd catch that monkey you say how'd they catch it? it that gourd was tied to the tree and that monkey was not going to let go of those peanuts therefore it stood there <laughs> till it, they came and got the monkey would not all that, all that monkey had to do was to let go of those peanuts and pull its hand out and it wouldn't have got caught how, how is that a, does that sound familiar 
Sometimes, amen, there's things around us, amen, there's burdens and there's weights, there's hindrances, there's sin that's in our life and we just will not, no matter the cost, we just will not let them go. God's speaking to somebody this morning because I'm having a hard time trying to get it out this morning. I'm going to say, I don't know who you are, amen, but be sure your sins will find you out. All God people say it. Amen, we need to, well, I'm talking about that weight that you know, amen, that's the weight to you. You know you should, amen, do right. You know that that hindering you, amen, from being and living closer to the Lord, amen. Outside sin entangles, amen, the feet of that runner and it trips us up and makes us fall, amen, repeatedly. I mean, how many people, amen, have you seen that's been got tripped up in their Christian walk uh, over bitterness, I mean, over bitterness, amen, over lying. They ain't a big lie and a, and a little lie. They ain't a black lie and a white lie. Amen, sin is sin. What about envy and idolatry? What about those sexual sins? Oh, God, people say it. Well, I ain't committed adultery on my wife. If you're looking at pornographic material, here you are. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, but preacher, there's a drawing line there. Hey, man, about lust. Where's that line of lust at? Hey, man, hey, at the time you're looking at that pornographic material, hey, man, let me tell you something. You're at, a, you're at that drawing line. Hey, man, that if you had the opportunity, you would. You say, oh, don't you put that stuff in my mind, preacher. Uh, don't, don't, you, don't you put words in my mouth. Hey, man, hey, you would or you wouldn't be sitting there looking at it. Well, I just got, you ever heard somebody? Well, I just got caught up in the moment. Well, you better learn to not get caught up in the moment. And we've all been there. Got caught up in the moment. Somebody say amen. Amen, but that's still not an excuse, amen. You hear this preacher? That might sound better than I, I committed sin or I committed adultery or I committed fornication. What about those besetting sins, amen? What about those, amen, the way that, that, that's outright sin? What about the besetting sin? I mean, things that we've tried to get rid of and they just keep coming back. Those things, amen, well, I, I, you come to the altar and you give them to the Lord, amen, you think you give them to the Lord and you've done your heart, I mean, you're remorseful, you're, I mean, you mean it with all your heart, then you get right back up out, off of that altar, you, you go back out tomorrow, you do good tomorrow, I mean, you have, you've prayed through it, you've done good Tuesday, you've prayed through it, you get up Wednesday morning and all of a sudden, Same sin that you come, that besetting sin that you get, hey, that you came to the altar and kneeled and asked God to forgive you, it's right back there. How many's with me? I'm talking about, amen, it just seems like it keeps coming back. You can't get rid of it. It seems like the, the temptation's always there, always there. Brother Jason, thank God for your testimony. Brother Jason, amen, how many days today? 50 days. Hallelujah. He's a count them off. You know what that does? That blesses my soul. Hallelujah. And you know what? Hey, he, 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 you know what he done yesterday? He drove me and Travis around on that then. Drove us around. Hallelujah. You said, Preacher, why? Glory to God. I looked over at him, amen, coming back, and I said, Man, you, you're just a blessing seeing you sitting over our driving us. Hallelujah. 50. He said, You know what? Amen. Now, I, now he, he verbally said it, and I'm going to share it. I don't think you'd care, would you? All right. Amen. And, and, and glory to God. But don't you listen to what he's saying. Amen. Now, he, he, thank God, God changed that boy. He said, you know, I ain't had big a problem. He said, 50 days a day, he hadn't had a drink of nothing. Ain't that good? And he said, you know what? I ain't had a problem with that. Boy, he ain't that good. I ain't had a problem with that. Now, there's some men, amen, that's, that's had a drinking problem, amen, that it's still a problem. Not saying they're doing it, but it's a battle in their mind. Now, I'm not saying Jason don't have trouble every once in a while, but he made a comment yesterday. That ain't been the worst problem. The worst problem is the, uh, is the other things that are around him. Everybody with me? 
In other words, there's some of those to be said, and that's those other things that are sitting around, that's standing around him, or that's close to him. Sometimes our family can be that. Did you know that? Sometimes our family, amen, can be that hindrance, amen. I mean, man, they're all, they're all for you, amen, as long as you're out here and they're sin. Amen, but when you, hey, but when you get it, you got religion. You're a man of God now. And they'll distance themselves from you. Well, I'll just say this, amen, listen, it, to a lot of people that's that way, it's just conviction in their life. Amen. amen, because of the change they've seen in the other person's life. Are you with me? Hey man, thank God that he ain't having that. That that wasn't his biggest problem. Hallelujah. Hey man, but let me just say this. Whatever your problem is, stay away from it. Before you got saved, whatever your problem is, don't put yourself back into that place. How many is with the preacher? If alcohol was your sin, stay away from that alcohol. Stay away from the people that drink that alcohol. That means your friends have to change. Drugs your problem, stay away from that drug. Speaking of alcohol, we're getting a stupid brewery in Nebo. Or at least that's what they call it. Or what they said they're going to call it. You know what I thought? Man, we need a band of preachers just to come down there and stand on that property and have a word of prayer. Now, I don't wish bad for nobody. Boy, he's get on Facebook. Hey, man, let me tell you something. I remember my pastor, hey, man, making a comment. He went to property one time. They was going to put a, no, they ended up being a honky-tonk on it. Hey, man, and glory to God, they went, to, hey, they went in there and prayed. Hey, man, and guess what? The honky-tonk burned. Now, I ain't going to pray to that building to burn. Because you don't wish evil on nobody. You don't wish bad on nobody. But I'm going to tell you something. Hey Amen. Nebo don't need no brewery. And they don't need no alcohol. And you think, you think, hey amen, we're crazy for praying. Listen, we need to pray. God will stop it. Well, we prayed. Look what we tried to do. Liquor by the drink. Hey amen. Well, yeah, but we done our part. It ain't here. Hey amen. Because I didn't put a bumper sticker on the back of. Well, I didn't put it. But he put a. Put, you remember that bumper sticker? I remember your story how they tried to switch it up on you, too. Hallelujah. Hey amen. But listen, we've we done our part. Those besetting sins, amen. You know what that's going to, that ain't going to help Nebo. That ain't going to help Nebo. Yeah, by the way, this man, amen, uh, when they do the liquor by the drink, said he's going to spend a million dollars if it gets in. I ain't seen that million dollars spent yet. Anybody? Help me there, amen. Amen. So not only that, that man's a liar. Unless you can tell me, show me where the million dollars is being spent at. The devil will tell you anything Amen. to beset you that call evil good and good evil. Amen. Wait to slow you down. Wait is outright sin. That bitterness, that lying, that envy, that idolatry, those sexual sins, that besetting sin that comes back. And it seems like, it seems like, amen, that you've tried to get rid of it. You try to get rid of it. You try to quit. And you try to quit. Amen. Now listen, it don't mean, hey, amen, that you come back and do the same thing over. If you come and repent of it and you happen to do it again, you don't go back out there doing it willfully, saying, I got saved. It doesn't give you a liberty, amen, an occasion to the flesh to sin. Amen. But we're going to fail. The Bible says we all sin and come short of the glory of God. But it don't take me if I sin this morning. It don't take me till tonight to get on my knees and repent of it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now it might, amen, if you willfully do it. <laughs> it might take you till tonight or tomorrow, amen, if it's something willful in your life, you know it's a sin. Amen. Listen, sometimes that weight's besetting. It might be coming back like cancer. But listen, memories, amen. Of past mistakes is a best setting sin. Anybody past ever still haunt them? Got one hand. Anybody else? All right, look at that. To, look at that. The past still haunts you. Let me tell you, every time that past sin comes up, you let the devil know, amen, that hey, those sins are forgiven. And you that raised your hands, amen, God does not remember that sin, amen. Why? Because as far as the east is from the west, that's how far God's put that sin. All God's people said, hallelujah. Listen, those memories of past mistakes. And the devil's duty is to make you think about it 
because he's trying to get you to go back to those mistakes. You hear me? Those, those bouts of addictions, amen? Hey, I don't know what, what addiction. There's, hey, you can start going through addictions right now. Name them, name them, name them. Be untold what people's addicted to, amen? Listen, I, maybe the Lord will give me a message on it, but those addictions, amen? Those wrongful habits that we can't break, amen? They're among those besetting sins, amen? The weight of distractions, Listen, sin, sin's not the only thing that keeps us from being spiritual and being, being holy and ex- acceptable unto God. Sometimes those weights are things, amen, that might not be necessarily sin like I said a while ago, but some, most of the time they're a result of the sin. Distractions, amen. I don't, listen, I'm not against television until that television takes place of God. In your time with God, I'm not against the I'm not against the uh, internet, Amen. As long as you <laughs> stay holy on the internet, Amen. Hey, listen to me. Uh, the internet can be used, Amen, as a good tool, Amen, for the ministry, like live streaming this morning. I'm talking about these distractions can keep us from progressing spiritually, Amen. Hey, listen, lay aside every way. Amen. And the sin that does so easily beset us. There's those things in life that, listen, weights that slow us down, that hold us back. Amen. That, that, that slow down our progress. Amen. There are pursuits. Amen. In, in life, like ambition. Amen. Those things I mentioned, the television. Amen. Movies, music. Amen. Talking on the phone too much. Did you know that's a besetting sin? Could be. Somebody help the preacher. In the race set before you, amen, what God say is the race you're running, is it keeping keeping you from the race that's set before you? Sometimes it is addiction. Raise your hand, Cecilia. Hallelujah. Wave real high. Boy, you ought to think. Not she ain't the only one. There's many in here. There's many in here. Thank the Lord. All right, listen to me. It could have been alcohol. It could have been a drug abuser. Amen. Whatever it is. Amen. Uh, maybe you, you think it's a little habit. Amen. Addiction's large. Li- addiction's small. Whatever. Listen, all, to me, all of them's large. It may seem small to you, but any addiction is large to that person. Amen. Those dependencies. Amen. I had I had uh, Walter, uh, not Walter, but I had um, Rodney stand back back our Wednesday night for you that were here. Amen. He was a begging me. I need help. I mean, after we prayed, he said, "I I need help." Meaning, I need help from this addiction. That's what he didn't say it outright, but he was saying, "I I need help." Amen. And you need to pray for him. Don't stop praying for him. I just seen him yesterday, amen. Addictions, they weigh you down. Amen, glory to God. Is your way to lie? You know you got people that outright just lie. Just lie. I mean, uh, you think it's a... In consent, well, I'll just say you just think it's just there, it's little, it ain't, it ain't much sin. Who's it really harm? I tell you who it harms. It harms you and God. Amen. Lying. You know it's easier to lie than you think it is? You ever thought about this? Now think about it. I, 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 I got to I analyze things. You, know. you go up to the, you go up to the uh, gas pump. You stick your card in there. And it says... Uh, uh, is this a debit card? Knowing all the time it's a debit card. And you hit no. Yeah. Anybody ever thought of that besides me? Anybody? Whoop, whoop. Anybody else thought about it besides me? Do you know that's a lie? You say you're straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. 
Is this a debit card? No. But I know it's both. Because you can use it as credit. And you can use it as a debit. Well, that's what it means, preacher. No, but I lied. And the only way to get to that, and I don't know my PIN number. You're saying, why don't you put in the debit number? I don't know it. I don't know passwords neither. Easier to lie than you think it is. How many would say that is a lie? Some of you don't want to admit it because you're doing the same thing. Because you think you're sinning. And I'm thinking, Lord help me, that thing caused me to lie. That's what I think. Now you, you, <laughs> have me getting it. But I'm going to tell you, we take, lie, we take lying lightly. And you better not lie. Amen. Lord, how mercy. Amen. Your weight might be lying. Foul mouths are dirty little weights. Foul mouths are dirty little weights. Them four letter words that you say you're a Christian and they still may not be taking God's name in vain, but they sure stink. God telling us to lose those extra weights. I think we can live closer if we clean up our mouth. We can live holier if we can clean up our mouth. We can clean up our eyes. We can clean up our ears. Everybody with me? I mean, man, country music. You, hey, country music. I, you've heard me. You've heard me say it. Angie, come to the piano. Country music. All it encourages to do is cheat, 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 cheat. With my adultery. Can I say amen? It's either cheat, 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 drink, drink, cheat, cheat, drink, 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 cheat, 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 drink, drink. Am I right or wrong? And you justify yourself listening to that mess. I'm going to tell on you again, Jason. Glory to God, I got in that van yesterday, amen, and I heard a 91.1. That was Gaffney. He said, man, the Lord's changed. He said, hey, I don't listen to nothing no more but gospel. He said, hey, when I have to drive down the highway delivering for J&T, he said, that's on that station. Oh, I mean, preaching and gospel singing all day long. You know why? Because whatever you feed this man. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Amen. Listen to me. Wow. Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, a lot of people weights are, are, are passion. It's passion. That, um, that ambitions and obsessions and infatuations. Uh, I'm talking about a boy old Samson had them, didn't he? Weight of anger. Anybody in here don't have a temper? If you don't have a temper, raise your hand. So you, so you know, so you know what that tells me. Everybody in here has a temper. Do you know your temper is a weight? Sure it is. That anger, that temper, amen. I mean, hey, can't. can't get out that thing in a split second with some life's inconveniences and frustrations they seem like they're blown away seem like you're on edge you don't feel good man your temper flowers up and then I mean how many's ever blowed the horn and felt guilty after you blowed the horn but I want a minute don't raise your hand well, I don't feel so bad hallelujah And then you wonder, then you, then you, uh, then you wonder, well, they, did they know me? 
Did they know I was a pastor up there going home to church? Somebody about ran over you at Walmart. I'm not talking about in the parking lot or in the parking lot too. Hey man, are just about run over you with a buggy and you say, oh, excuse me, you're as nice as you can. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. And they walk by you like, and you and won't, won't respond a word to you. And I say, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I've done it out loud before. And then the Lord said, uh-uh. Uh-uh, that ain't good. I would have to walk through there and say, Lord, help me and forgive me. We've got to realize we're in the world, but we're not of the world, and the world ain't going to have compassion on us. We're going to have to have compassion on them. And remember, love covers all sin. Listen, your weight might be fear this morning. Some people are so scared of this pandemic. Let me tell you something. I'm not taking it lightly. It's a real thing. I, I fear certain things about it. I fear for my mother about it. And all of this stuff. But some people are so, some people's got a weight of fear that's keeping them, and they're using that to not to not serve the Lord. Amen. They're using that, amen, for, uh, amen, that's hindering their, and by the way, marriages has been hindered by. I mean, families have been hindered by. And, and listen, maybe, maybe it's a, and fear can be paralyzing, by the way. And, and fear is real. can be a weight so I guess this morning I don't know what your weight and whatever sin it is but God told me to preach this sermon this morning to bring your weights those weights and those sins that are so easily besetting you that you know that God's pointed out I may not not have named it but God has told you what it is and God wants you to bring it to this altar this morning and I'll tell you what if you'll do that It'll feel like a thousand pounds come up, uh, just be lifted up off of you. Why? Because that sin's gone. My sin is gone. Let's stand our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. That's a, that's a thought God's given me. Ain't going to doubt it. Amen. Whatever the Lord's told you to do this morning. All right. Now, who's going to? Angie, can you sing a song? Now, if you come up here, you'll say, well, they'll know I've got something, something wrong in my heart, in my life. You do. Everybody in here has got besetting weights and sins, amen, that we have to take care of all the time. So I wonder who's going to be the first to find a way to an old-fashioned altar. I'm going to kneel behind this pulpit, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. God spoke to your heart. You that God pinpointed something, bring it to Jesus this morning. Bring it to him, amen. People are already coming. Maybe there's an obstacle. Maybe there is a besetting thing that's in your life that's a weight. Maybe it ain't necessarily a sin. Amen, a direct sin, but it's a weight. And, and it, maybe it's caused by sin, but you have no control over it, maybe. And maybe you need to get on this altar and say, God, I need help with that. Amen. Amen. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my There's nobody looking around this man, the Lord. How many know without a shadow of a doubt you're saved? 100% sure if he is to die, heaven's going to be your home. Heaven's going to be your home. All right, you may put your hand down. Nobody looking now, just me and the Lord. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not coming to you. I'm not going to offend you. I wonder if somebody said, Preacher, I'm not where I ought to be. And God, I've got some besetting weights, besetting sins. And there's weights in my life that maybe are not necessarily sin. I need God to help me with. Is there anybody? Bless that heart. Bless that heart. Anybody else? Bless that heart. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to pray my own prayer behind this pulpit. This altar's still open for you.
was lost alone, but I found my way to Thank you, dear Father, for uh, the souls that's been on the altar today. God, thank you for the attentiveness. God, in your house, thank you for each one at going home church. Lord, help them know we love them. Most of all, you love them. Take us, Lord, to our respective places. God, bring us back in the evening service. All right, I'm going to say happy Valentine's Day. And, man, if your Valentine's here, that means your husband or your wife. Then I guess if you got a boyfriend or girlfriend, turn around and say, Amen. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. I'm seeing a few. Some of you Valentine's ain't here. You know. Amen. Did you tell James you love him? Did you tell her you loved him? He, her? <laughs> Did you? Did you mean it? Amen. There comes my Valentine of 34 years. I love her. Huh? Well, we've had 36 Valentines, but we have had 34. Amen. Married. I told her last night, I said, Angie was coming back home. I said, you know, I love you. And I told her I loved her. And she was driving me around from Walmart. And uh, I said, I love you. And I said, uh, I could go buy you three dozen of roses. <laughs> no, she didn't, but I said, you probably would like the money, though, wouldn't you? She said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what I done. Amen. Ain't that good? Amen. Amen. Now you all need to buy your wife three dozen of roses. <laughs> and not from Walmart. <laughs> I'm teasing. You better let them know. You better love them before you lose them. Love it. You better love it before you lose it. Amen. How many of the sermon I preached on that? You better love it before you lose it. All right. Some of you ready to get out of here, ain't you? All right. I love you. God bless you. Happy Valentine's Day. Sometimes the way is long and hard. Sometimes I don't feel like traveling on Sometimes I'm pierced by Satan's darts And sometimes I just want to go home